You're listening to Soundside. I'm Libby Dankman. For 12 years, researchers in Washington and British Columbia have been tracking down a mystery. Along the Pacific coast, sea stars were dissolving into goo. This phenomenon was given a name, sea star wasting disease, and it killed billions of these marine creatures. The large sunflower sea star population declined by around 90 percent. It's one of more than two dozen species affected by the disease. For more than a decade, scientists studied the wasting disease but couldn't figure out why it was happening. Until now. A new paper published this week in Nature, Ecology, and Evolution details a likely culprit. John Ryan is the environment reporter at KUOW, and he's here with more. Hey, John, thanks for coming in studio. Sure thing. So take us back. When did people first notice this wasting disease? So park biologists first noticed it off Olympic National Park in 2013. They noticed it in ochre stars, which are the kind of postcard pretty purple or orange sea stars that are in lots of beaches all around our part of the world. And then reports started coming in from widening areas, Vancouver, BC, Alaska, California, and many species up to 26 over time. Mm. So it was just a, a widening pandemic that's been going on for a decade. So how has this wasting disease impacted both the sea star population and the marine environment as it is, as we said, just kind of reducing these sea stars to goo? Yeah, we know that the hardest hit species called the sunflower star, which are amazing critters with up to 24 arms, the size of a large pizza, uh, that they've lost 90 percent of their global population. Other stars are also pretty hard hit. They're even though they're, they're flat and pretty. They're also voracious predators. They're, they're, they're feared dominating predators on the seafloor. Even sea urchins, if they even smell one of these, they will glide away in fear. They wow. Biologists call it a landscape of fear. So they're really, they're like the grizzly bears of the seafloor, right? Um, so when they were gone, or many of them were reduced in population, that meant that the urchins got to proliferate. And they didn't have anybody controlling their populations. They started just mowing down kelp forests that could just eat the base of the kelp. And then the kelp forests were basically disappearing in lots of areas, which has really big effects on all sorts of species, like various fish that depend on kelp forests. And what are sea star populations like now? Have they been able to recover much? Yeah, I spoke with Alyssa Gaiman of the Hakai Institute up in Canada, and she's one of the co-authors of this new study. As it turns out, she's from Seattle, and she told me about her childhood memories of sunflower stars. I can remember from my childhood, you could go to Lincoln Park and you could see at a low tide several sunflower stars. And if you go now, like you'd be very lucky if you found one. And that's sort of true everywhere. Sunflower stars have not recovered from this pandemic disease. It's still ongoing crisis for them. Some other species, like the ochre stars I mentioned earlier, uh, they have had re- recovery in some places. It's a, really a mixed bag. Now, I know a lot of research went into trying to solve the mystery of the wasting disease. Scientists jumped on trying to find the culprit almost immediately. John, why did it take so long to track down what was behind the disease? Right. I mean, scientists identified the cause of COVID-19 and sequenced its genome in weeks. So why is it 12 years later? Well, it turns out we know so little about most of the oceans and most of the biology going on there that scientists didn't really know what's normal and what's not. You know, uh, any animal, including you and me, we, we contain multitudes. There's all sorts of microbes living within us, different species. And they didn't know what was normal and what was a problem. And they made a wrong turn, a red herring, if you will, to pardon my ocean metaphor. Ocean Um, pun, yes. Yes, there there you go. Um, They thought they identified a virus that they found on the skin in some of these dying, um, dissolving sea stars, and they thought that was the cause. But that turned out to be completely wrong. So it kind of led people down the wrong path for a while. Okay. Yeah. So we now are on the right path, it sounds like. This is the billion sea star question. What do researchers believe is behind the wasting disease? This new study identifies it as a type of bacteria called Vibrio. And Vibrio is a genus of bacteria. Other Vibrios cause other diseases in fish and shellfish. And there's a Vibrio, one Vibrio, causes cholera in humans. This Vibrio that affects sea stars isn't a danger to us, but it's a kind of a nasty bacteria that does lots of damage out there. Oh, so not a virus at all, a bacteria. How did scientists isolate this specific kind of bacteria that was causing the disease? They were able to isolate it from six sea stars, and then they were able to uh, cultivate it in a lab, which is not an easy thing to do, and then take that Vibrio and inject it into other sea stars and give them the the disease. Those crucial last steps never happened with the virus studies uh, almost 10 years ago. So wasting disease has killed billions of sea stars. The 
deaths are gruesome. And it's very sad when you, you know, talk to these folks who uh, were involved in the research to try to find this, just the devastation that this disease has caused. What have you heard from folks who were on the ground doing this work? You know, many wildlife biologists, they have a deep understanding and even affection, or I'll dare say love, of the creatures they study. And so it's very traumatizing for them to watch these things disappear in this gruesome manner. And these disease detectives, they're intentionally sickening or killing animals in their labs that they actually have a bit of a relationship with. So it's pretty traumatic for them. And here's Alyssa Gaiman again, talking about the emotional toll of this important work. I would regularly sort of take my team aside before and after we were working in the lab where we would talk about how sad the work made us <laughs> because it is incredibly sad. And so we need to sit with that emotion and then we do have to actually do the work. Yeah, there were really hard moments in the lab, but the fact that we've found the cause means that we can actually try to recover the species now. Mm. So it was worth it in the end is what I'm hearing from Alyssa. Yeah, it's a big breakthrough. So now that we have the likely cause, the bacteria that was creating this horrific death toll in the sea star population, what's next, John? I mean, is there a way to protect sea stars from this bacteria? Researchers want to develop a test for this disease, much like a COVID test for humans. Um, And they also are looking at developing probiotics, things that could help healthy stars fend off this disease. But where this kind of research can continue is up in the air right now. The Trump administration has proposed uh, eliminating all biological research by the agency of the U.S. Geological Survey, whose lab hosted all this research out at Maristone Island, one of the lesser known islands of Puget Sound. Oh, I've never heard of Maristone Island. Out near Port Townsend, there's this fisheries research lab that has access to fresh, clean salt water from Admiralty Inlet. And that's where this work took place. The Trump administration wants to shut down all these labs that the USGS has. Congressional Republicans, they've proposed smaller cuts to the U.S. Geological Survey. So how this will play out locally and whether there will be a lab for this kind of work to continue in Washington is unclear right now. Wow. John Ryan, environment reporter at KUOW, really reporting on a kind of murder mystery that's been solved now by scientists, including those right here in the Pacific Northwest, finding the cause of sea star wasting disease. Uh, You can read his reporting on this study at KUOW.org. John, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to SoundSide. And hey, this show is only possible because listeners support us. If you are able to give right now, check out the show notes for a link to donate. And don't forget, you can listen live on KUOW 94.9 FM Seattle at noon and 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday or anytime online at KUOW.org.